Hello again everyone, welcome to another compiler design tutorial, my sixth one in a row. Today's subject is lexical analysis, and we should be able to cover roughly half of what we need to do. We skimmed over this subject while looking at the phases of a compiler, but today we'll be going into much more depth. Without further ado, what exactly is the lexical analyzer? Well, And again, I'm going to be taking notes along with you to make your life easier. So the lexical analyzer, it scans the input that we're receiving from the actual program file. So the program file that's being input into the compiler is scanned character by character. This is known as the character stream. And we can also call this input the character stream. Okay, now to start with it removes blank spaces. Okay, and uh, it groups meaningful groups of characters into strings. So Okay, now these um, strings are called lexemes. Uh, and tokens are produced with these lexemes. So based on these lexemes, tokens produce. And these tokens have the format name, which is the token name, and attribute value, which is going to be the value associated with this uh, particular lexeme, if necessary. Uh, there might not be an attribute value. Now errors are checked for. And the sort of errors that are checked for are um, effectively just misspellings or, you know, non-meaningful characters. And the misspelling of, for instance, um, identifiers keywords or operators are some examples. Now keywords are things like if, else, identifiers are things like variable names, and operators, well you can guess they're just, um, you know, plus, minus, and things like that. Okay, and then this stream of tokens is sent to the syntax analyzer. Now the symbol table is involved with this. The um, identifier lexemes are entered into the symbol table uh, and they may be associated with an attribute value. The tokens of, um, for instance, uh, an identifier will have a format as such. So for instance, ID and then one. Well, ID uh, shows tells us that this token is the token of an identifier. And then one points to an entry in the symbol table where the value of the identifier is stored. So 
single table entry. Okay. Now, um, a pattern, a pattern is an input string or a group of input strings that produce the same token. For instance, variable names are all going to be identifiers. Or numbers, or most easily, keywords such as if, else, so on and so forth. These are going to produce tokens that are exactly like an if. If an if is found, then it's going to produce an if token. So it's very, it's a lot simpler to um, associate and keywords with tokens. Now, let's go into more than on what a lexeme is. It's a sequence of characters in the source program. So. And it associates, uh, it matches the pattern for a particular token. And it's identified as an instance of a token. Okay. Now, how exactly do we um, recognize these character strings, these axioms, to be able to make tokens? Well, we use a recognizer. This identifies um, lexemes, basically. Okay, now let's go into a bit more depth on recognizers. This is a very simple example um, of code, or at least a snippet of code for a recognizer, giving you a rough idea of how it works. Now, we can see here we have a character array to represent our input stream. The input stream is what we're getting uh, from the program, basically. It's the, the characters that are found on the program that we're attempting to compile. So we read the program character by character, and let's say we found ELSE. -E. Well, how's this gonna be read? Uh, this it won't be exactly how it works, but this is just to give you an idea of what it may look like um, roughly. So if the first character matches, then we go on to the next character. If the second character matches what we expect for this pattern, then we go into the third one and so on and so forth. And if they all match, we, well, in this case, I've printed success, but that means a token will be created. Uh, and then if one of these doesn't work, then we'll continue by trying another token to fit this particular stream of characters. So let's say we run this, save. And by the way, for those of you that, that don't know what an array is, uh, it just stores a number uh, of a particular type, a number of variables of a particular type or not even variables really, just values of a particular type. So in this case, we're storing four um, characters in this character array that's called input stream. I haven't gone over this in my um, Java tutorials yet, so, but we will be soon. Let's just press play. 
and we've gone token created. But if we were to change this to C, for instance, it would not be able to make a token of this. It shouldn't be able to because ELS C does not associate it with the S uh, with the else token. And another way of looking at this would be with a, a finite automata, a finite automata, or a DFA. In this case, well, we start. Then, if we get an E, we can move to the next state. If we get an L, we move to the next state. If we get an S, we move. And then, if we get an E, we move to the final state. So this is another way of thinking of it. This is a very, very simple example. It's just so you know how a recognizer work, and we will be going into more depth. Uh, so that should be all for now. We will be having another video on lexical analysis, since it's a pretty big subject, and I didn't want to have one very, very long video. Uh, but thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time.